During this lecture, we will review research best practices and I'll model the assignment that's due Thursday night before midnight. First of all, I want just to reiterate how important it is to know how to research well. Um, sometimes our research, we, we may mistakenly think that it consists solely of doing a Google search, but that's not quite the case. That's a good place to start though. Um, but honestly, I mean, researching well, again, um, how we mentioned in class, it develops authority, it helps your reader trust you, you again appear authoritative about the text, so your argument's going to be more successful, not only that, by researching not only your position but several others, it will create a more well-rounded argument and you'll of course obtain more knowledge about uh, the issue at hand. First I want to talk about just selecting a topic and I know um, I had chosen topics of course for you all um, and, and you can kind of whittle it down from there. Some of you may know quite a bit about each of the the topics on the assignment sheet others might not know anything about it and so you know again a, a quick google search across maybe news media a variety of news media uh, sources might might help you there okay so once you actually select a topic for your assignment you do want to pose a research question that's worth exploring so select a topic you wouldn't mind researching and that an audience also isn't going uh, to mind reading about. Um, when I say pose a question worth exploring, uh, think of, you know, the um, research process as answering a question. Okay, so whatever topic it is, maybe you just initially pose a question like, uh, you know, how can we reduce food waste? Or what can be done to reduce veteran homelessness? Or should college classes get rid of textbooks, right? So that just gives you a question, a starting point, uh, and, and you can expand from there, right? But it is important when you are able to actually select your own topic to pick something that's specific, that's important, that's a real world issue, maybe something that even affects you personally, and to stay away from more generic topics, okay? So you do want to avoid those. Uh, again, you don't really have too much uh, leeway with with the assignment sheet, but hopefully one of one of those issues did pique your interest. So we're moving on to conducting research. Uh, the first thing that you'll need to do before you you set out, and of course after you have a topic and maybe one particular research question is my in mind um, it's just to map out a search strategy okay some kind of strategy or plan so uh, I've of course provided a research guide for you all and I'll be filling it out as well during this lecture to model your own research I want to switch to that now just so you can see it um, it's called the persuasive letter research guide just a very basic word document you can fill it out electronically and then email it to me before Thursday night at midnight so uh, you can actually follow along with this and and fill your own in if you'd like um, but it consists of questions like which topic did you select and why, how much information did you originally know about this topic, list three facts you discovered about this topic after briefly searching Google, and then we move forward, coming up with your own research questions, search terms, maybe just some preliminary, you know, source material, like maybe you could use that, um, looking at reliability of the sources, and then lastly just forming an educated opinion, okay? So this is what uh, it looks like, so we're going to switch back, um, <coughs> excuse me, so I've here just defined for you research and strategy, um, so we can put this project into perspective just a little bit. Research, of course, is the careful study that's done to find and report new knowledge about something. So it's okay if you don't know a whole lot about the subject that you're researching at first. This is how you actually acquire knowledge. Um, also, the activity of getting information about a subject. That's more basic, of course. 
Um, a strategy, of course, is a careful plan or method for achieving a particular goal, usually over a long period of time. Notice as a long period of time, sometimes we think that we can maybe conduct research in, you know, five minutes, and that's not necessarily it. Research actually takes much, much longer than that if you're doing it right, okay? Um, and uh, another definition for strategy, of course, is a skill of, make, of making or carrying out plans to achieve a goal. So if you want to go ahead and make yourself, you know, some research goals, just kind of starting out, maybe um, if that'll get you motivated, go ahead and do it, okay? All right. So I'm going to just use a scenario to fill out this research guide and again to kind of demonstrate how research should roll in a perfect world. All right, so the scenario that we're looking at here is that Jerrion, a Comp 1 student, wants to research arming college faculty, right? So this is, of course, not an option on your all's list, but it's one that I'm using for this particular demonstration. So. Of course, this is the topic we selected, so in filling out our research guide, we might say I selected uh, armed faculty as my topic because I'm a college student and I'm concerned about safety. Uh, recent mass shootings on college campuses have highlighted this issue and how piqued my interest in the subject. Something along those lines. Okay, so just a I'm selected this topic and here's why. Oh goodness, sorry about that. All right. In filling out, well, how much information did you originally know about this topic? Let's slide back here. Because she doesn't know much about the subject, she searches Google. So, you know, if you honestly don't know much about the subject, uh, you can say that, um, you know, I've heard about this subject on um, media websites here or there, but I haven't thoroughly researched it. Okay. Or if you know quite a bit about it, you can make a little bulleted list for me. It's okay. All right. And so Jerrion is going to conduct, right, a Google search. Um, and maybe after that search, we'll be able to identify three facts that we did discover about arming college faculty. So we're going to do a Google search. And it's okay to start out with something that's um, not incredibly specific at first, like Arming College Faculty. Uh, okay, so maybe Jerrion looks at this source. It looks like it's a news source, maybe. Letter to the editor, all right, so maybe she looks at that. Maybe she learns one new thing there. Um, ooh, inside higher ed. An article not in favor of arming faculty members stating that's foolish and dangerous. So you might, you know, read through that. Uh, Huffington Post and other media. This is a .edu, so um, this might be more of a trustworthy site. Okay, uh, it says Arizona, Florida, and Texas proposed to arm college professors. So it looks like it might be just a rundown of that. So maybe Jerrion checks that out. Uh, and and as she's checking these out, of course, we can even be. 
going ahead and, and putting your you know your internet sources over here if you want And if there's a more efficient way to do this, you go right ahead and do it. I know it's taken me a little while. Uh, let's see. So a lot of these, like Tumblr, oh, don't use anything there. Another, okay, another EDU. This one um, actually takes a different stance. It looks like this is arming female students to prevent. So that one we wouldn't we wouldn't use for this necessarily. All right, so let's say after our, our kind of quick Google search, okay, we found like three um, three links. Maybe we learned uh, three facts, right? So I think one of those articles that, um, you know, some faculty members don't want to be armed. We learned that in one of them and, and just pretend like we read the other two and we also, of course, um, maybe learned a new fact or two there as well. And so you, as a researcher, will want to do this as well again for the assignment that's due Thursday night, but with your own topic. So just list, you know, three things that you learn, okay? Uh, let's see, and, and while you're doing that, of course, you can go ahead and list those as some of your, your sources that you um, just kind of preliminarily looked at. All right, so moving forward, um, maybe, we, before at least conducting more research, right, maybe Jerrion needs to, um, just post some, some, more specific research questions, right? Some more specific ones. And so uh, when you think about arming college faculty as your topic, uh, well, a lot of things come up, right? So will armed faculty prevent shootings? I mean, that's a, that's a big one, right? And again, you can just do a bullet list for this if you'd like. Uh, let's see, will all faculty be armed? Maybe just certain ones. Um, how do we decide who can carry and who cannot? Uh, what kind of weapon will they carry? Uh, what kind of liability issues may arise? Um, ooh, students, students, right? Um, Let's see, how do students feel about armed faculty and so on, okay? And you might have 10 questions. Um, try to get at least five, okay? Try to think of it. And try to just think of your topic from several different angles, okay? Like if I wanted to thoroughly research this, what are some answers I need? Like what are some questions that I need answers to, to be an informed citizen about this particular topic? Okay. All right. And so in, in going through these research questions, eventually you'll come up with like some better search terms, hopefully. Again, for your preliminary like quick Google search at the beginning, something kind of vague is okay. But when you start doing in-depth research, you may want to switch and do, um, you know, maybe some some more specific terms. So, with arming college faculty to prevent mass shootings or or whatever your um, you know main claim is eventually going to be, you might say, okay, armed faculty. That might be a term. Um, let's see. You may for the opposite end. Gun-free zones, right? 
um, one of your opposition angles and and again try to search for articles that aren't necessarily all alike okay that are giving you different pieces of information right so one article might talk about um, like in support of armed faculty another against armed faculty another talks about safety and gun free zones things like that okay so armed faculty gun free zones let's see psychological effects of gun violence okay um, let's see Dang well, dangers of open carry benefits of open carry and so on okay and again you need to have at least five search terms but um, you're probably going to have a whole lot more than that or at least need a whole lot more than that in order to actually successfully argue okay all right so after you have search terms then you conduct or can conduct maybe a, a more um, in-depth Google search and something else that you can do is search our library's databases. So go to columbiastate.edu, click on library, scroll down until you say, uh, let's see, um, probably databases by subject and for educ you might look under these education ones if this is your topic again if you're so Jerian right our our scenario student here Jerian might click on this okay and you're gonna have to enter in your charger net username and password to access these databases okay all right, and then maybe you just try something basic, armed faculty. Great inflation, burnout. Okay, so we see how that search term, nothing happened. Maybe we put it in quotation marks. Okay, there's one. Um, by Jesus Via Hermosa. This essay is actually in our textbook. Um, gun, guns don't belong in the hands of administrators, professors, or students. Okay, so this is a source. Um, we might, let's see, gun violence in schools. That might be a good one to look for. Oops. Okay, here are all kinds of things. So examining school safety and gun violence in America. Should gun safety, okay, that one probably not. Um, let's see, reducing the risk. Okay, and even though, you know, some of these are situated in like a high school setting, if you were arguing it for a, a college campus, that's okay. You can still use the high school ones. But you can see that this search provided much better um articles at least to choose from and the thing is with these uh, databases they go ahead and like pre-screen everything to make sure it actually is a trustworthy source okay so you can tell like this it was published in the curriculum review volume uh, 54 issue 4 um, this is you know a scholarly journal uh, same thing for this journal of school health and so on so you can usually always um, safely use these sources that you find um, and that kind of takes us to evaluating sources of course um, the database ones those are again more trustworthy reliable okay but you can put your your sources just through a very brief crap test we're going to do some in-depth ones in class um, but you can you can put yours through so currency uh, is it up to date? Is it recent? Is it recent enough for like the subject matter you're actually researching? Okay, reliability. Well, does it seem like a reliable source? Like, does it seem um, if if it's an argument itself, does it seem um, fair? Okay, if it is a more objective or fact based source does it seem fair and unbiased okay so 
Um, you'll look at that. And then relevance, of course, like is it actually relevant to your topic? Just like when we were looking at the databases and we're like, eh, well, some of these might not be um, relevant. Authority, look at the author's credentials. If there is an individual author, there may be multiple authors. Um, it might be an organization as an author, but there needs to be an author. If you find something that doesn't have either an individual person, a group of people, or an organization as author, it's probably not the best source to use. And then lastly, the purpose or point of view. Uh, making sure that the source that you have found actually has a purpose. Um, and a purpose like to educate, to spread knowledge, as opposed to rant on a blog, right? Um, so, so you'll look at that as well, okay? So again, going back to, you know, your journal articles or even your um, Google articles that you find, you'll want to, to do that. And try, if you can, to stay away from um, actually using the news media sources in your paper. Um, but if you can't find a better source, it, it's somewhat understandable, but um, you should be able to find a better source, okay? The news media sites are fine in the beginning to gain some knowledge to just kind of, you know, get a general sense of the issue. But once you actually start your research and know where your argument's going and what you need support for, um, you know, try to try to find better sources, okay? And, of course, after you conduct this research, you can kind of form an educated opinion, right? So, uh, Jarian, she might just jot down some opinions. Because of the recent increase of on-campus shootings in the U.S., something needs to be done to prevent them. One way to prevent shootings would be to arm faculty members. Students may also want to open carry, but that may pose liability issues. Uh, since many faculty members oppose handguns on campus, a compromise might be necessary. Now, you will note that this says many of your initial opinions may be unsupported ones. And remember in class, we said supported opinions are much, much better than unsupported ones. However, in the nascent stages of your research phase, you might need to work with unsupported opinions until you find research to support it, okay? Um, and if you can't find research to support your opinion, then maybe your opinion needs to change a little, okay? All right, so let's go back to our research guide. All right, so after you give me some links to internet sources, and these can be to straight up, you know, sources that you found doing a Google search um, or doing uh, the database search, okay? Then you'll wanna tell me which one of those you believe is the most reliable and why. Um, again, for this, Jerrion would probably have selected one of the journal articles that we found on the database through the library's website and probably discussed why it was, of course, more reliable, maybe speak about the author's credentials, things of that nature, okay? And then for the part about forming an educated opinion, uh, you know, she, she listed those back there, and, and again, you want to list at least uh, three. If you have more opinions than that, then go right ahead and list those as well, okay? All right, so that ends our, our research lecture, and it's now time for me to, to turn you loose to fill out your own research guide. Uh, remember, this is due Thursday by midnight. You do need to just fill it out electronically and email it to me using online campus email, okay? Now, after you do this, I'm gonna provide you with some feedback, okay? So just some brief feedback, make sure you're on the right track, maybe make some suggestions here or there. And then you can start maybe drafting Okay, so maybe, maybe you already know the direction your argument is going in. That's great. Go ahead and start drafting. 
Um, maybe you're not 100%. That's still okay. You can start drafting regardless. Just think of, okay, the types of paragraphs you could craft, okay, if it's easier to do it that way instead of thinking of it as an entire assignment that you need to get drafted before Tuesday night at midnight, okay? So, again, Thursday night by midnight, this Thursday night, you do need to complete the research guide and email it to me via online campus. Then... Tuesday night by midnight you will need to post a rough draft of your assignment to your group's discussion board on online campus and I've already put you into groups now um, from there we when we return like the following Thursday we'll talk about what we're going to do in those discussion groups but for now let's just keep it simple research guide Thursday night, rough draft to discussion board, Tuesday night. All right, and I will see you all when I return on March 3rd. That is next Thursday. All right, um, good luck. Again, if you need anything between now and then, um, you know, hit me up on the, the Remind app, okay? Um, and, and if you don't have that, then just... Uh, email me through online campus. Good luck!